Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And today we are talking about solar winds. And I know a ton of you have contacted me asking me for my thoughts, my opinions. Are you going to do a video on this or a podcast or anything along those lines? And the short answer is yes, I was, but I wanted to take my time and do it right. So this is going to be above and beyond my normal videos. I put together a slideshow presentation. And if you are listening to this on podcast form, you may want to flip over and actually watch the video on YouTube or whatever social media platform you follow me on, because there is a lot of information to unpack. And I'm going to go through all of this. Like I said, I wanted to get my notes together as well as talk to people that were much closer to ground zero than I was to get my facts straight and everything else. So this is coming from multiple sources that I will be continuously citing throughout this uh, brief presentation, if you will. But this is what's going on. And this is one of the most sophisticated hacks I think we've seen in, let's say, the last five years or so encompassing a massive amount of governments, not to mention corporations and on and on and on. And we're going to dive into all of this, what happened, what went wrong, the timeline, everything, and why this wasn't detected by some of the most sophisticated firewalls and detection systems on the planet. And with that, let's get going. And let's start with the timeline of the attack, because I think it's actually really important. And before solar winds even came to the forefront here uh, in terms of uh, the being in the news, we have to actually start on Tuesday, the 7th of December, and talk about FireEye, because FireEye revealed that their own systems were essentially pierced in what it called a nation with top tier offensive capabilities. This is according to the New York Times. That's right, FireEye, which is a very well-known cybersecurity vendor uh, and trusted by uh, governments, corporations like Microsoft and on and on and on for threat intelligence, disclosed their own data breach. That obviously is a very bad thing given what they do. Now, on Wednesday, the 8th of December, basically all of the news outlets started reporting that FireEye had been hit. The Wall Street Journal was the first that I could find that mentioned Russia being the most likely suspect. Prior to that, FireEye had been saying nation state, Wall Street Journal probably scooping all of the others, although the New York Times, Washington Post, and everybody else was very quick to report on that as well. Now, let's skip forward to Sunday, the 13th of December, because from Wednesday to about Saturday, it was a lot of the same news as smaller news organizations were continuing to report on FireEye, because on Sunday, this past Sunday, FireEye reported that SolarWinds Orion network monitoring solution had a vulnerability that had allowed nation state attackers access into thousands of companies, including entities like the US Department of Treasury and Commerce. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. As I mentioned there, the Washington Post then identified APT or Advanced Persistent Threat 29, also known as Cozy Bear, which is the same group to uh, have believed to have been uh, hitting FireEye and their Russia base. They are attached to the SVR, Russia's intelligence service. Reuters confirmed that in a later article that day. And FireEye at this time was not saying if they were using Orion or not, simply that they had discovered this. So was, or was FireEye using this? Were they simply saying, here's a bigger breach, look at solar winds, don't look at FireEye. We're about to find out because again, I went through this day by day looking at news sources. Now, Monday, the 14th of December, Wired reported that SolarWinds had disclosed to the Security and Exchange Commission that as many as 18,000 organizations were possibly vulnerable to this attack that FireEye had disclosed. The CISA, which is the cybersecurity wing of the US Department of Homeland Security, ordered that all federal agencies turn off all of their solar wind products until this could be assessed, fixed, removed, patched, whatever it was that uh, ended up happening by department. And so obviously that is a huge, huge scramble by multiple government agencies around the United States to start shutting down solar wind infrastructure within their own infrastructure. Now on Tuesday, um, the 15th of December, which is yesterday, Yahoo Finance actually reported that FireEye discovered the backdoor while probing its own breach, which is essentially a de facto confirmation that FireEye was using Orion. So what we have here is FireEye discovering that they've been breached, disclosing uh, before anybody, including SolarWinds, and now we have a confirmation that that SolarWinds was actually using Orion. So they didn't, they weren't researching this or stumbling onto this. They were investigating their own data breach. 
And here we are with SolarWinds being the culprit for the FireEye data breach and a whole bunch more. So by virtue of that, FireEye is known worldwide, a ton of organizations. They have something like 300,000 customers uh, that we'll talk about, but some of the organizations that may be affected by this that were either directly targeted by Cozy Bear of the Russian SVR uh, or those that could be affected that were running SolarWinds Orion is rather legion. Now, this is around the globe, but I decided to focus just on the US uh, right now only because one, it was very easy for me to find in English uh, as I was reading and translating sources from uh, other news agencies around the globe, including Korea, Russian as well, Chinese, uh, you know, and some other languages. But I wanted to basically stick here in the United States because I'm sitting here in the United States and this is a pretty quick list. And this is just a, a less than a drop in the bucket for, for the organizations and companies that are potentially affected here. So for example, we know that the US Treasury Department was directly uh, targeted by Cozy Bear. This is according to reports. Same with the US Commerce Department. But it doesn't stop there for the US government. We have the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. The US State Department is using Orion. The Justice Department, many parts of the US Department of Defense. That's right, the Pentagon has also been using Orion for its management, obviously of grave concern uh, when you're talking about national security. The NSA, speaking of national security, they are using Orion as well, and reporting showed that they had not actually discovered it uh, until they were alerted by FireEye, who was the first to uh, basically get wind of this. Now, Los Alamos National Laboratory, this is where we design nuclear weapons here in the United States. They are running Orion. Virtually every Fortune 500 company on the Fortune 500 list is running Orion because it is a large scale network management platform. The DOD contractor Boeing, obviously you know them from their airplanes, they are a major uh, player in the DIB or defense industrial base here in the United States. They're running Orion. Multiple state governments from coast to coast here, not to mention international governments uh, that are using Orion to manage themselves. And basically, there are 300,000 customers of solar winds. Not all of them are running Orion. As I mentioned in the last slide, the SEC, uh, as, as solar winds was reporting, uh, solar winds is reporting about 18,000 customers. But those running Orion are going to be the largest entities uh, that are sitting on the planet, whether they're massive governments or corporations or anything like this. This is huge. This is absolutely crazy, and this is why we are sitting here talking about this today. And with that, let's focus on the vulnerability for a little bit, because the vulnerability is, is rather interesting, and it's, it's sophisticated, and it's actually really quite ingenious how they were able to create this and then get this to basically every customer that is running Orion. So with that... This vulnerability has been uh, around since March of 2020. This is according to an article I read uh, from Tenable Security. And so this has been persistent for about nine-ish months now, which is a huge, huge thing. FireEye has actually labeled this as they were the first to identify it. They've labeled it as Sunburst. Now with that, let's look at what Sunburst does. And this is coming from FireEye's own disclosure and reporting on this specific vulnerability. Now. What you see here is solarions.orion.core.businesslayer.dll. Um, and this is essentially a digitally signed component of the Orion software framework. And it contains a backdoor that allows it to communicate to third party servers. And essentially it got Trojanized. And so, uh, so, and so uh, FireEye is tracking it as Sunburst. Now, what happens according to, according to FireEye is that this Trojan will go dormant for up to two weeks or so, meaning you've installed this into your system, into your Orion network, and it doesn't show up for two weeks. It lays there to make sure that it's not detected. And then when it goes live, it starts executing commands or quote unquote jobs, which then allow it to do things like transfer files, execute files, profile the system, meaning gather that information and send it back to God knows where disable system services, and even reboot critical infrastructure like servers. It basically gives the attacker full control uh, over a network and access to a whole lot of critical information. Now, it masquerades 
uh, essentially as the Orion Improvement Program protocol or OIP protocol. And basically it stores its reconnaissance results with a legitimate plugin configuration. So it basically blends in to all of the legitimate solar winds activity. So if you are looking as an administrator of Orion at the plugins and the configuration files and everything that you see, it would be one of a plethora of files that you would uh, see on your screen. And it's simply that, that good. You just gloss right over it. That's a huge, huge issue. Now, um, it basically was delivered by SolarWinds' updating service uh, according to multiple reports that I've read and, and as well as FireEye, which indicates that the update service from SolarWind, meaning you've got Orion, it's phoning home to SolarWind to update itself, that was actually compromised. And uh, FireEye had screenshots of the certificates uh, and other information essentially uh, saying you could go to this website on SolarWinds, download this update and install it, and you're actually updating uh, or installing a Russian-based Trojan into your, uh, into your system. You're creating a backdoor thanks to a vulnerability in Orion. That is a huge, huge problem. And that's how they got in. And so the next question obviously is, how the hell did all of these detection systems miss this? I mean, think about it. The US government has spent billions of dollars developing a threat uh, detection system across the internet here in the United States where they're dropping in sensors to monitor for malicious traffic. It's uh, basically run by the US Cyber Command. It's called Einstein and it missed it. Think about all the UTM or Unified Threat Management next generation firewalls of pretty much every make and model that was also missing this traffic from Orion. So why was this happening? How the heck did it get through the enterprise firewalls of the world? How did it get through the Einsteins of the world? Basically, because the infected update was coming from SolarWinds directly as legitimate installs, essentially the threat detection systems were whitelisting this. They were, make, they were putting it on their allow list or whitelist. This is what we are talking about here because SolarWinds is essentially a trusted platform for management. And so naturally the updates are automatically going to be trusted. Now, because this backdoor was also relying on SolarWinds own OIP protocol that was basically using it or piggybacking on it, it was essentially getting a free pass as the protocols were passing through the threat detection systems of a firewall or anything else in the infrastructure that was looking for threat. It's really that simple. And so they're seeing, or the firewall is seeing, oh, I see OIP protocol traffic coming from solar winds, either whether it's egress or ingress, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on my allow list and it gets a free pass, which means the threat also gets a free pass as well. That is the genius part of this. It was not uh, basically the cozy bear breaking into this department of treasury or wherever it is, installing something or poisoning something locally. They hit solar winds updated SolarWinds unbeknownst to SolarWinds, and then SolarWinds pushed that out to every single Orion customer that they have as those customers were updating and typically per their compliance. Compliance requires that you are updating and patching your systems as frequently as possible to thwart vulnerability. And here we are. I also read and learned that uh, Texas law enforcement, uh, SolarWinds is based in Texas, has now raided SolarWinds' office and started confiscating equipment. And so we're gonna see where that goes as well. That again is according to sources and one article that, uh, that I've read thus far. So SolarWinds is gonna have a real serious issue with this, but this is the core of it. And if I apply this to uh, just a basic framework, we can think about the five laws of cybersecurity because this entire incident, as sophisticated as it is, really underscores how the five laws of cybersecurity have basically not been adhered to in a situation like this. And quite frankly, I will explain why we know that is going to happen on occasion. I don't really blame solar winds, although I do blame solar winds, and I will get to that in a moment. So, law number one if there's a vulnerability, it will be exploited. Obviously, SolarWinds had a vulnerability in Orion that was exploited. Everything is vulnerable in some way. This is why the CISA of the US government basically said shut down all SolarWind products because now we have zero trust when it comes to SolarWinds until uh, we're able to understand exactly the scope and the depth of this. Law number three, humans trust even when they shouldn't. Think about those network and cybersecurity administrators that are simply whitelisting uh, the Orion traffic to make it work. And under normal circumstances, 
yeah, you need Orion to work. You're not going to have your firewalls block it. That's why this attack was so intelligent because essentially those configurations that you're going to put into your UTM firewall, your threat detection system, is going to allow and identify that Orion traffic as safe. So that's obviously an issue. With innovation comes opportunity for exploitation. SolarWinds has, Orion has typically been considered an innovative product as it continues to evolve its network management capabilities. And with that evolution, it was able to be exploited. And always, always, when in doubt, law number one, if there is a vulnerability, it will be exploited. Now, we cannot work essentially uh, in IT or cybersecurity or even go to a store without extending some kind of trust. I can walk into my local hardware store and I can spend $100 buying something to you know, put it in my house or fix something and I'm giving them my credit card. I am entering into a trust relationship with that hardware store or the supermarket or wherever I am that they are going to maintain my credit card information in a secure and compliant manner. We as network administrators or cybersecurity professionals or whatever your title is in IT or cybersecurity is extending trust to SolarWinds and companies, other companies that also provide us management software, threat detection systems, whatever it is we're using. And by virtue of that, we are placing our trust that they are going to maintain their own vigilance, their own security, and their own capabilities for their own compliances to essentially make sure that as we are using their products, they are, they are maintaining their updates in a safe and compliant manner so we know their products are safe for us to use. That completely broke down here. And by virtue of that, we now have at least 18,000 organizations, including governments around the globe, sitting in the same boat simply because a backdoor was able to be installed into an update server. And then that update got pushed to friggin' everybody. So as it stands right now, that is everything that we know about the solar winds breach from multiple sources, including those I've talked to directly, not just newspapers and all of that. This is a very serious issue. It will continue to evolve, but I wanted to put out this video in this manner simply because I know that everybody's been asking about it, talking about it, and this was no five minute video that I could do here. This is a major problem. And as we continue to go on, I predict that solar winds, well, they're definitely not the first and they won't be the last. If anything, this underscores our need to maintain our vigilance. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, if FireEye can get hit or solar winds can get hit, what about me? Yeah, what about you? Make sure you're vetting your software. Make sure that you are maintaining vigilance to the best of your ability. You can do everything right in cybersecurity and still fail because somebody's going to innovate around your solution. But if you're doing your due diligence, you are continuously lowering your surface area for attack. So don't give up, don't throw up your hands. We're all in this together, maintain that vigilance. And if anything, this underscores the need for more vetting, for more threat detection, for more capability, we all should be integrating into our lives in any which way. And so that is your news of the day. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks everyone.